Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast today. We're joined by Marvin Van Prook, who has a background in management consulting, is now a Salesforce admin, and now is running uh, business operations for a company called Streamsets in San Francisco in California. Marvin, a welcome to the show. Thank you. And so I, I'm super excited here because we're, we're going to get a, a broader view of sales operations. Obviously, you are responsible for everything to do with Salesforce, so that is probably slightly broader than just sales. But first, let's understand how you initially got into operations. Yeah. So after graduating, I wanted to get into consulting. So I started in litigation consulting, um, analyzing large amounts of data uh, using a tool called SAS, SAS, which is very similar to SQL, um, and fell in love with the data. So it was analyzing millions of rows of data and, and coming up with a story. Um, from that, I then moved on to Booz, where I travel around uh, project to project, really, really uh, getting encompassed in every project and fixing problems, improving processes, and, and fell in love with that. Um, I wanted to get my foot in the door in tech. And so my last project up here was in uh, NASA Ames. And from there, I decided I'm going to go into uh, sales operations because Sales is, <clears throat> sales is the closest, uh, sales is a lifeblood of a company. And because of that, I wanted to be the closest and connected uh, to that. And so I chose sales operations because I wanted to learn and do everything. And, and as a consultant, you never really want to uh, specialize in anything. You want to be a generalist and kind of be good at everything. And, and so my goal in whatever task may be is I want to be able to parachute into any task and then complete it, solve it, and then move on to the next task. And so sales ops allowed me to have that. Uh, so coming in, I started at Couchbase where um, I was an analyst there and did you know uh, commissions, reports, dashboards, uh, a lot of fiscal year planning, capacity, productivity, and then moved on to building the connected where uh, pretty much owned sales operations. So this was uh, back end of Salesforce, process builder, all the everything is that connect, uh, softwares that connect and commissions again. Um, and running territory, helping with territories, really planning, figuring out, you know, who gets what and uh, would leave the routing and, and uh, uh, largely just you know, running sales operations. And then from there, it was stream sets. And so in stream sets, it's, it's again, running everything that touches Salesforce, improving processes, uh, you know, in terms of sales and, and productivity, uh, as well as making sure that everybody's on board and we have one system of truth. Got it. And quickly, the, the size of, of the sales team that you're currently managing, well, not managing, but responsible for at StreamSets. Yeah, so at StreamSets, we have a team here in the U.S. and a team here in EMEA. Uh, the team in the U.S., when I started, was about 10, and we had about five in EMEA. And we have, uh, with that, we also have a match in terms of sales engineers of 12 to 15 as well, uh, when I started with about five SDRs. And as a result of COVID, so, so we've had to you know, drop some of those numbers down. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's um, you know, and then and at the same time, we have offices in San Francisco as well as uh, uh, Austin, Texas. Got it. And the current sales tech stack you're, you're using? Yeah, so at StreamSets, we have Outreach, uh, Sales Navigator, of course, Salesforce, um, we're a big Marketo shop, and uh, we use we have Zendesk, and um, you know I have Zapier to automate things to push to Slack when when uh, things get closed one, as well as throwing in a Giphy, and uh, we also have Gong right that connects to our region. We can we can do all of our recordings there. Um, those are pretty much the main main tech that we have here. Oh, yeah, that Giphy integration and Slack is very important. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It inspires uh, people. <laughs> uh, I, I, there's one extra question. I don't normally ask this, but what's the coolest thing that you've done with Salesforce since joining StreamSets? Well, uh, I think the coolest thing that I've, I've done, um, I would say, start at Building Connected. And it was using a tool called G Connector, which is the best tool ever. Um, it's very inexpensive. And at the same time, what happened was it allowed me to replicate an expensive commission software such as Exactly, which was I think 16K total for everything. But using G Connector, you can pull, push things in and out of Salesforce. So you build your complex model inside Google Sheets. And from there, you have 
everything just calculating. And then you then create a custom object in Salesforce and then you map it. Um, so from there, you have your commissions inside here and then push, it pulls the data from Salesforce, does the calculations, pushes it back. And so I thought that was the coolest to be able to uh, solve a commissions problem that people want to see how much money they're making. And at the same time, solve a problem that the company says, I don't want to spend any money. So you spend $200 buying G, a G connector and you go ahead and you build your model and then you, you know, you've just, uh, you know, increased productivity with a very low impact to the company's wallet. I assume that you were popular with the finance director after that. Um, <laughs> broadly, uh, more broadly, what is, can you share something that you've done again at stream sets that has significantly impacted productivity of the reps slash engineers? Yeah. So, uh, Coming in here, the, there are many departments that are just disjointed and a lot of manual work was happening, whether it be new emails being sent to say, activate this customer. So those are easily solved by creating email alerts um, or whether it be reps just not really knowing how to create a contract. And so they would always ask for help and that then bogs down the deal. So you implement a, a system in CPQ to make it self-serve. So you work, work with legal, work with finance to make sure you have these playbooks already built. So then reps can then go in and ev add everything to their shopping cart and just cart their way on out and check out themselves. Um, so that, you know, with that, they've been able to, to do everything themselves as well as connect Salesforce to DocuSign. So they create it and then they send it. And so it's really hands off is, is what really helped sales most here. Over the past few weeks, we've spoken to a hundred sales leaders around the world to understand the impact of COVID-19 on revenue. And we've combined these insights into one single report that covers the immediate impact, the commercial outlook, the tech stack that you need, and actionable advice for sales leaders. You can claim this whole report completely for free if you go to ebster.com forward slash COVID. That's ebster.com forward slash COVID. Got it. Sure. And forecasting in general, I assume you have been responsible for managing that process within Salesforce. What, what is the, the rough or just like a high overview of the forecasting process of stream sets? So for, for forecasting, we set everything up. Well, because our deal cycles are, are much longer than um, a high velocity business, we actually spend time every week going through every single deal that's that's in the pipeline. Uh, we categorize all of those deals into three categories. Technically, we have uh, high risk, we have gut, and we have low risk. Uh, those are the three categories we have that's in the pipeline, and it it's aligned to the stage. And so, the way that people move stages is check boxes. If you've done these three tasks then you check these three boxes and then automatically move the stage for you. And so uh, based on whatever stage they're in, it aligns to a forecast category. And so we then have uh, use a Kanban in Salesforce that then maps, here's your low, here's your gut, here's your high, and this is where all of the deal sits. And so every week we'll go through and we'll say, everybody go through this and, and where is this at, where is this at, where is this at? Um, and then that's, that's how we, we look and forecast for the quarter and then for renewals, we do the same thing. We look at this quarter and we also look at next quarter. Um, and so the, the way that we have our stages is if it's a qualified opportunity, meaning that a sales rep has looked at it and says, actually, okay, this is, I've had a meeting. This is a, a true op. I will say this is qualified. Then that's the stage two and enters the pipeline. Um, so, so, so whatever date there is, um, that's, how, that's, that's how we would go ahead and categorize that as, as a pipeline opportunity. That makes sense. And then metrics. If you could only measure one sales-related metric for the rest of your career, which would you choose? <sighs> and by sales metric, uh, I think that, of course, we we uh, if we're looking at SDRs, then the metric that I I it, it's how, is their talk time. How much time are they? Are they talking? Um, would be for SDRs because uh, sometimes it can go straight to voicemail, and so we don't don't really want to do a count. If it's for sales reps, of course we want to know how much how much they're you know how much 
ACV or ARR they're closing. But uh, at the same time, if it's hard to, to kind of paint the entire picture with one metric for, uh, for sales reps. Um, but if I were to choose one, of course it would be sales, but then I think everybody would choose sales. If it's not sales or productivity or, uh, it would, it would basically be one thing I'm, I, 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 I always would like to know is ramp time. So how long does it take for this person to come in and fully ramp? And so then, then that's instrumental in building an onboarding plan and building, um, you know, the most accurate models of how, how much revenue can we expect once we bring in new people. Got it. Awesome. And then a final question, who has inspired or educated you the most uh, in sales operations? So, so back at Build It Connected, um, I had a manager, his name was Ross Collinson. And literally from, from the day I started, you know, we worked on everything together. Um, at the time I had, I only, I was only a power user of Salesforce. So meaning I only did reports and dashboards. So in the time that I worked with him at Build It Connected, he taught me everything. So from uh, everything logic-based that's in Salesforce and process builder, custom objects, um, everything under the sun. We, we started at Build It Connected when it was only, I started when it was about 50 people. I think he started when it was 30 and took it all the way to 300, nearly 300 and then acquisition to Autodesk. So it was a crazy ride with three business products, uh, three, te- three teams, um, all living in Salesforce. So it was huge from, I think, I think all the way to 40 sales reps, 40 to 50 sales reps is, is what the, what it ended up as. And so it was multiple things arising here and there, uh, issues in Salesforce, trigger flows, uh, problems that, 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 you know, a lot of other companies just never faced before. And so, um, everything I know in terms of sales ops and really, uh, Salesforce and being, you know, where I am today is can be attributed to him. Awesome. I mean, it sounds like an amazing journey. Um, Marvin, great to have you on. Here's, here's a couple of things I picked out that I think were pretty well, impressive and informative for the audience. So, I mean, G Connector, pulling data out of Salesforce, doing stuff and bringing it back in seems like it could potentially save quite a bit of cash on some tools other people are using. So, Great credit for that. The exercise you must have gone through to get finance talk, well, to get finance agree and trust Salesforce must have been incredible. And I think after that, there's probably a lot of efficiencies. And I think finance probably thank you a lot for doing that. Um, and then you, you mentioned a whole host of metrics, which I think are really important to track, specifically uh, for SDR's time actually spent talking with prospects. Um, so, so that's what I really enjoyed. Marvin, thank you so much for coming on. Great. Thanks so much.